we hear from the book of Acts, chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had finally arrived, they were all together in the same place. Suddenly there came from heaven a noise like the sound of a strong blowing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then tongues seemingly made of fire appeared to them, moving apart and coming to rest on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in many languages as the Spirit gave them words to say. There were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem at that time. When they heard this noise, they came together in a crowd. They were deeply puzzled because every single one of them could hear them speaking his or her own native language. They were astonished and amazed. These men who are speaking are all Galilean aren't they? So how is it each of us can hear in our mother tongues? There are Parthians here and Midians, Elamites and people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya that belong to Cyrene. And there are people from Rome, proselytes as well as Jews. There are Cretans and Arabs. We can hear them telling us about the powerful things God has done in our own languages. Everyone was astonished and perplexed. What does this all mean? They were asking each other. But some sneered. They are full of new wine, they said. Then Peter got up with the eleven, and he spoke to them in a loud voice. People of Judea, he began, all of you staying here in Jerusalem, there's something you have to know. Listen to what I'm saying. These people aren't drunk, as you imagine. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel was talking about when he said, In the last days, declares God, I will pour out my spirit on you people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, even on slaves, men and women alike, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy, and I will give signs in the heavens above, and portents on the earth beneath, blood and fire, and clouds of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and glorious day, and then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. So it's nine o'clock in the morning. Are they all drunk? Well, no. No. Would be the, would be the short answer. And on the back of this experience, 3,000 people come to a living faith in Christ Jesus and are baptised that very day. Up until that point, there had been 120 followers of Jesus who were still gathering together. They were still gathering together. They were praying. They were hearing from the apostles about all that Jesus had taught them, because as we know, there's things that he took them separately away from others so he could specifically teach them. And over the time between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost, they'd replaced Judas, so they still had their twelve. So they were 
they were very well structured. They were worship, you know, they were still following Jesus and and prayer and worship in their sharing of all they had in common. I mean being Church of Scotland, it's the they were had the marks of discipline, they had the marks of the church, they were preaching, they were sharing communion and there was discipline. They were sorted. So it was it really was just a the makings of the church that we would we would know today without the the grand trappings that were coming together as a as a community of faith and sharing together. But it looks it looks like at this stage they're just in a small group. If you can call a hundred and twenty people small, they didn't really have a an out an outward look at that time. And that's the point of Pentecost, you could say, is you had this group who were devout followers of Jesus and they were meeting and they were in together in this upper room, which must have been quite a large upper room. If you wonder about that, then go back and read Acts chapter 1. But they, they're they together. and But they're not looking beyond themselves. They're not going out. They maybe just were too frightened. Maybe didn't know what to say to people. And we've all been there. I know you sometimes look at the ministers and think they've got all sorted. No, we don't. Oh, no. <laughs> and sometimes is, we... Is, is there a... Not so much a lack in confidence, but no, nobody's actually explained to them at that point what their, what their capabilities are. Maybe it's not that. Maybe... It was, they needed to wait for this spirit, that promised Holy Spirit to come and that power to come to them. And yes, there were some people who went, oh, they're full of new wine, subtext, they're drunk as skunks. But 3,000 people hearing what Peter had to say and going, not just I want a bit of that, being baptised. Now you're currently studying German on Duolingo. Wouldn't your life have been so much easier if rather than sitting studying your language on your phone, the tongue of fire had came down and said, uh, Sie haben Deutsch gesprochen, or however they say it. Uh, that would be really useful, but at the moment it's not like I can use it. Yeah. Sorry, Cologne. We'll visit you soon. <laughs> But yeah, tongue, tongues of fire came down and all of a sudden, in, a, in an area that was perhaps a trading, a trading hub, trading routes, and where commonly people would have spoken Greek as a, a common language to the merchants, here's everyone now hearing confidently and hearing clearly in the language of their, of their birth from many, many far off uh, places. And I suppose that's that's a bit of empowerment. You know, these uh, this group gathered in that upper room, rather than now being in the position of you will come to us, you will come into our gathering, they now have an, an outward focus. They now are equipped and empowered to hit the road. And ho- you know, given, you know, by... A hundred years, not even after this happened, you had a bishop in France. So the the church exploded in terms of growth following Pentecost. So it wasn't just an outpouring of the the Holy Spirit on those hundred and twenty, or even those three thousand. It kept going because people kept going out and telling others with the confidence of the Spirit about Jesus and about that love that God shows. Now, we're, we're filming this uh, on the day that our lockdown restrictions have been slightly lifted here in Scotland, but really we shouldn't be going out. But I suppose what we're doing here, we are going out. We're, we know when we, when we look at our, our YouTube uh, statistics 
this video is being viewed in places far and wide all across the world and we'd love you to leave a, a note in the comments to, to say where you're viewing this from. Uh, so, so maybe this is a, a recognition that we don't just have to go out and speak in person but use the skills and the abilities and the gifts that we've been blessed with and the technologies that have been made known to us to go out and this this perhaps is is the new language that we've learned i think we've learned an awful lot in the past 10 weeks yeah i mean i, I had heard of zoom before this all kicked off but i would imagine for a lot of you zoom was something that you did fast mm. rather than was a way of of coming to church coffee mornings or in or a m meeting with friends or family. It's Sorry. it's a different world, but it's 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 again you're able to use that technology to see others. That's still going out while staying at home, which sounds counterintuitive, but maybe this is the opportunity. And we also get much more views of this service than are ever in either of our churches combined. So maybe if there's if there's one thing to, to come out of this is to look beyond what we think we're capable of and to reach the use the skills, use the talents that we've been blessed with to reach those that that need to hear the message in whatever language they feel comfortable with. And to remember that the structures of the church were there before Pentecost. Worship, preaching of the word, sacraments, and discipline. But the church didn't actually really happen until people went out with the power of the Holy Spirit to show God's love in the world. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Parent God, Redeemer and Sustainer, three in one and one in three, you invite us to be part of a wider family community, a family that is diverse and spread around the world. Hear us now as we bring before you our brothers and sisters, known and unknown to us who are in need of your help this day. We pray for children and adults who have faced the death of a parent or parents. And we would ask that you would draw near to them, that you would comfort them and let them know that they are not alone. We pray for children and adults who live in abusive families, who long to be free of them, but are afraid to be alone. We would ask that you would protect them and find a way to remove them from a place of harm. We pray for children and adults who have never known what a family is, who were or are in care homes, never knowing the joy and commitment of a family. We would ask that at some time in our lives, they would experience the joy of a family relationship, we pray for children and adults who were once your children but who have strayed from the path and who now fear there is no option to return. And we would ask that they have an opportunity to know that they would be welcomed with open arms. And we pray for the children and adults who have not yet come to know your parenthood we would ask that we would be able to invite them to come and see for themselves the joy of a church family where they are made welcome and accepted as they are. O oh God, Father and Mother of us all, help us to share your invitation to join with your family and with others and give us courage to take your invitation to all people 
whoever they are and wherever they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.